Hello and welcome to uh, another edition of Brian and Ryan, the Cowboy Rip Job. Nice to have you here with us today and uh, we are excited to uh, visit again uh, Mr. Peterson. Uh, not exactly the Cowboy fan and that's probably a wise thing for your mental health right now. Um, I'm kind of starting to wish that I could have gotten those three hours back from my life yesterday. How are you? Uh, well, I'm not much better as a Bronco fan, so <laughs> yesterday was a disaster. <laughs> Um, you actually do pretty well uh, controlling Patrick Mahomes, but they beat you everywhere else. So, uh, <laughs> but I think we need to change the name of this show to Brian and Ryan Rip the Cowboys. That just pretty needs much. to be. <laughs> it's going to be the way for the rest of the season, I can tell you. Yeah, and you know, I feel I feel dumb because you know, just a couple weeks ago, I I seriously thought that they'd be fine. I wasn't saying Dalton was as good as Dak, but I thought they'd be fine in a bad division. And now, Brian, I, you know, I don't know if you agree or disagree, but I would argue the Cowboys are right now for sure the worst team in the worst division in football. Uh, they, they were – and, you know, we had both talked last week about it was a concerning matchup because Washington's strength was their front seven and with the Cowboys' O-line struggles. And it, what we thought could happen, happened. What O-line? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um. Yesterday was the most disgusting display of professional football I think I've watched since. I go back a long way, okay? I'm an old guy. When I was growing up, I had the great pleasure of having to live in, a, in an area where all you got was the New Orleans Saints. And this was the 1970-71 New Orleans Saints. Uh, and at the same time, that was with Archie Manning as a rookie. At the same time, Jim Plunkett was playing for the New England Patriots. They had gone one and two in the draft. Those were, up until yesterday, the two worst offensive lines I have ever seen perform in the history of football in my lifetime. What I saw yesterday was a sieve, and it was brutal to watch Andy Dalton taking the beating he took. He was sacked, what, five, six times? The thing, I, all other plays in the game go away after I, I remember Bostic with the dirtiest hit I think I've ever seen in a football game, headhunting Andy Dalton as he went into his slide, knocking his helmet off, knocking him out, and not one Cowboy player even shows so much as an ounce of, I'm going to get in your face and beat the hell out of you. Nothing. Nothing. They just sat there and just stared at it and went, wow, that looks like it might have hurt. I, I was so thoroughly disgusted with the gutlessness, with the lack of leadership, with the lack of competitive effort in that football game. I mean, from start to finish, it, the only time the game ever looked good was when they stopped Washington on the opening drive on the goal line. And you thought, well, maybe they're showing a little something there. Uh, and then, of course, right after that, there's a strip sack, and it goes for a safety. You know, Landon Collins just blows up Dalton, and he never has a chance. I, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, and you, you actually took – you stole my thunder on what I thought was the biggest thing. And as disturbing as that hit was, and it was a dirty hit, I, I was even more disturbed that no one did anything. Everyone just kind of stood there. No one rushed to Dalton's aid. Everyone just kind of looked around. I'm waiting for some cowboy to come in and just hammer boss it. Nothing happened. And, you know, I had, um, I had been thinking about, you know, who right now, like who do the Cowboys even look to as a leader, especially with Dak out? And that showed there are no leaders. There, no. There's no one there with the backbone to say enough of this and we're not going to put up with this. Your quarterback basically, yeah, gets headhunted. And we all just stand there and look around. Um, it was almost like the whole thing. I mean, the entire game, it was like they didn't care. Um, and, I, and I just felt like that hit on Dalton kind of personified everything. Your court, like what team, what other team in the NFL, their quarterback would get drilled like that and no one would do anything. No response, no anger, just looking around. I just kind of think it showed like this team is not dialed in like, I mean, like they've quit on the season. I 
looked at that yesterday, and the funny thing is, I came in on the on the back end of your game, the the Kansas City Denver game, and I'm watching Kansas City, and they're beating Denver up, and you see Broncos players mad as hell, and I mean they're having to be restrained, they're having you know they are PO'd, okay. Right. And they do not like how this is going, and they are, I mean, ticked off. You don't see one iota of that on the Cowboys' sideline. All you see is this defeated resignation that hey, it's over, we're done, the season's done. It's, and the season is done. Make no mistake about that. Here's the crazy thing about it. They play Philadelphia next week on the road. If – and I mean, it is a massive if, okay? But if they were to win, <laughs> this joke of a football team would actually be in first place in the NFC East. Right. Now, let's, let's not kid ourselves. That's what they're telling themselves right now at the star, that, you know, as bad as things are, we're still in it. But they're not in it. This, this, team, needs, this team needs to be blown up. The roster is horrendous there are no leaders you you've got people that you are paying huge amounts of money who have completely disappeared you've got guys that you're paying to be difference makers who are making no difference at what point in that ball game yesterday did you see um zach make one difference in the game at what point in the ball game did you see Jalen Smith be a difference maker at any time, at even one play in the ball game? Demarcus Lawrence, at what point did you see him do one thing that impacted the game in a favorable way for Dallas? That's been the story week after week after week. I get their offensive line is destroyed, okay? But there are a lot of teams playing with bad offensive lines that they at least show some level of resistance. So a guy got has a half of a chance to get the ball out of his hands. Uh, and I, I just don't and, – and here's the other thing. Same old recipe. They get behind by three touchdowns in the first half. They got to get out of whatever game plan they've got. The defense still running around, you know, get letting receivers get 20 yards behind them and getting destroyed and burned on those plays. Uh, Jalen Smith misses a tackle on a play where, you know, he might have had a chance to save a touchdown. C.D. Lamb, is it starting to run off? Is it, is it contagious? Is it starting to, you know, he's dropping passes. He's never done that until yeah. yesterday. The whole, the whole game was a, I don't give a, you know, the whole game was that way. And I just – I don't know. I don't know what you do. And I think the, mo the most disturbing part, you know, if you, you see a lot of bad teams will just, you know, cash out. They're done. But you had mentioned they win next week. They're in first place. So regardless of if everyone thinks they're the worst team or how bad they are, you know, a division title is still there for you. And for them to not have any fight – it's one thing to lose. But mm -hmm. there was – Washington is not a good football team. Oh, they have a good front seven, but they're not a good football team. And they completely got beat up. They got beat up and embarrassed by a bad football team, and no one seemed to care. The other part of this is there's two football teams that have the same excuse or could have the same excuse. New coaching staffs during COVID. Yeah. You tell me which team looked like a team that's got that's there that's bought into what their head coach is selling and you know they're making effort. And then you look at the same thing going on in Dallas with with McCarthy and company and I I don't know what's happening there. I I honestly don't. I I don't know what well, and we didn't uh we didn't talk about this last week cuz all the reports actually came out after I think we recorded last week but you started hearing the rumors of players, you know, off, you know, not putting their names on it, but saying the coaches don't know what they're doing. Um, I mean, yeah, this that's, this that's, has the chance to get even worse. Um, and has McCarthy? I mean, 
you know, I, I don't like saying this after uh, what seven games, but was McCarthy just the wrong hire? I don't know, but the team obviously isn't sold. Well, I first of all, those rumors, if true, okay, uh, because when they, when you talk about anonymous, you know, you just don't know. I mean, I know the reporter who did the report, and she's credible, mm -hmm. but. You know, when all the players were individually asked, they seemed literally, uh, you know, genuinely irritated and angry about it. That, you know, we don't do that in this locker room. We don't do this kind of stuff in this locker room. Well, the, the problem is um, that's what losers do. When, when you're getting smoked like they're getting smoked and they have not played, they've not been competitive in any ball games except the two wins, and they had to steal those wins. Okay? Right. So they've got they've shown nothing in the way of fight or competitiveness. Uh, I don't know that anybody could coach this team right now. To be very honest with you, um, I did hear somebody yesterday saying this is as bad a look for the Cowboys as ten years ago uh, when Wade Phillips coached his last game. They lost to the Packers, forty-five to seven. Yeah, and then he was gone, and Garrett took over and was the head coach for ten years. Say whatever you want to about Jason Garrett, but Jason Garrett's teams never laid down like this team has done this year. Um, I, I think Mike McCarthy – listen, the guy's got a Super Bowl ring. I mean, you know, he's won a lot of football games. Uh, but he's got a team full of people that don't know how to win. Mm -hmm. um, in a culture that's created by Jerry Jones where the players get everything they want and it's, it's a country club. And – I, I just don't know. I don't – you know, the, the question is, at what point does Jerry step in and say, you know, we've got to do something just to show the fans that we recognize there's a problem. You know, does that means firing Mike Nolan right now? Or, you know, so are we looking at the first possible, uh, you know, stare off between Jerry and his new coach? Yeah, I think that's a definite – I think Mike Nolan is a definite possibility. The other thing – you know, at what point does McCarthy say, you know what, I'm calling plays. Uh, you know, this is, you know, I've got to stop this from sinking any further. And maybe he has more confidence in himself. But, uh, but we'll see. One thing, I don't think any Cowboys fan would have thought getting to this point of the season, the possibility that Ben DiNucci uh, <laughs> may be starting against the Eagles. God, and what is the game for first place in the division? Playing behind an offensive line that couldn't beat a high school team. And they better – and whoever's the backup better be ready to play because the amount of hits – I mean, Dalton had that awful hit on him, but he had been hammered all game. So And, and Dalton isn't going to play. I mean, there's no right. way he's playing next weekend. The way, the, with the hit he took, uh, Garrett Gilbert is the backup right now, the former UT and SMU quarterback. Uh, if that doesn't instill some, you know, hope in you, nothing will. Um so, you know, watching that, and then we watch the rest of the league, and you see the Pittsburgh Steelers. They get their quarterback back in Roethlisberger, and they're 6-0 and and now. Yeah. Beat, and beat what I thought was the best team in the AFC, basically, with Kansas City, uh, along with Kansas City was Tennessee. The way it was a great played. game. It was a great game. So, you know, you're looking at some real power in the AFC right now between Pittsburgh and Tennessee and the Chiefs. And I'm sure I'm leaving people out. And Baltimore, Baltimore will probably get back up in there too. But yeah, it's it's a good group. The one team that is not probably going to be there may be the Patriots. Oh, Cam yeah. Newton and company are headed on a downward slope that is going. It's picking up steam like a snowball. <laughs> no, so yeah, I, this is the other NFL note I wanted to pick up on. So we had this constant discussion, Brady or Belichick, and you know, look. Belichick is probably the best best coach of all time, but again, this this notion that he can just take anybody and just win, it's not look, it's not true. The Patriots have been embarrassed at home two weeks in a row. Uh, Cam has no touchdowns, five interceptions over that stretch. Um, I mean, and then the painful thing for the Patriots yesterday, the quarterback that they traded away that was supposed to be Brady's heir apparent lights him up. Uh, and Garoppolo. Meanwhile, Brady is in Tampa Bay throwing, accounting for five touchdowns yesterday, throwing for nearly 400 yards, and the Buccaneers are just rolling. Yeah. So, 
Um, I, I think, you know, Brady, Brady um, had just as much to do – because there were people I felt like thought, you know, Belichick was the only reason for Brady's success. And my thing is, no. I mean, they were – they helped each other out, and Belichick is seeing what it's like when you don't have that guy that you can count on every single week for 20 years. Yeah. So um, Brady still looks good. And, and, you know, the thing that was funny about it is that they benched Cam when they were down 27 mm -hmm. um, and put Jason Stidham in. But the, the, the way it was expressed, I think, is that Cam Newton says, I'm going into the next week's ball game thinking that my job's on the line. Well, it should be because he's playing terribly. Uh, and that's it's one the of the only things thing I will say in Cam's defense. And, you know, Brady had this problem last year, too. The Patriots roster is brutal. Mm -hmm. Offensively, they're, I mean, they're no more talented than the Jets are. That's true. Uh, and it's, you know, it's almost, you know, have, has Belichick and Josh McDaniels, their arrogance that they can turn anything, you know, turn anything into something. I mean, it's, it's not working and, uh, and we'll see what happens, but yeah, definitely the Patriots, this looks like the Patriots that I remember when I was much younger that weren't any good, oh. not the team that we've seen the last 20 years. All right. Let's look a little bit at the uh, college football landscape uh, because we had the return of the big 10 in all its glory, and the <laughs> Ohio State games. Yeah, and the Ohio State Nebraska game had massive TV ratings for a big noon game on that this past Saturday. Um, you know, Nebraska was the team all off season, and in the midst of this COVID delay, and the, when they were when the Big Ten was determined not to play, uh, they were the ones that were literally threatening to schedule their own games and and go out and play a season. And so when they did decide to play, then the Big Ten rewarded them by punishing them with the <laughs> schedule they put in front of them. And their uh, schedule is brutal, period. Well, and, and it was done that way intentionally, too. <laughs> yeah, they, I think so. they wanted to make sure they put the, the Huskers in their place. Uh, and so Ohio State goes out there and just crushes Nebraska. And uh, Justin Fields looks, looks the part. You know, you still get back to the, the problem you've got with the Big Ten those there are some pretty good looking teams. I mean, the only team that is is of any consequence really is Ohio State. Uh, the rest of the teams there there's some good teams there. Indiana, man, they they played great against Penn State. Penn State may I not think be it's um, I think it's possible because we've talked about the last couple of weeks. Um, who is going to be like maybe that fourth even you know fourth team? I think if if they could run the table because it is a condensed schedule. I think Wisconsin has a chance just because, you know, they know what they, they know what they are. They do what they do. They're always solid. Um, but really probably Ohio state probably. And with Penn state getting upset, you know, they kind of were the other dark horse possibly and heavyweight. And now, you know, they start Owen one. So um, that probably knocks them out. Well, let me throw uh, one other wrench into what you just said though. Uh, the uh, Wisconsin game, for the first time in, since Russell Wilson, they actually had a quarterback who was a dynamic player in Graham Mertz, who had a huge game uh, on Friday night. And there's a report over the weekend by the Wisconsin State Journal and the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel that he tested positive for COVID-19 over the weekend. Oh, remember, what we, remember what we said? The Big yeah. Ten said you got to sit out 21 days. So he's out three games. If 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 that report is true, yeah, now Wisconsin comes out and says, "No, we we haven't had any positive tests." But if that report's true, and that kid looked like he was going to be the first dynamic quarterback they've had literally since Russell Wilson, yeah, um, maybe at a in a year when their running backs are not Heisman Trophy candidates, they're pretty average. Right. Um, he looked like he could be a real difference maker, and if he's got to sit out for three weeks. I mean, suddenly their yeah. season's down the toilet. So, but that's what I was, that was what I was going to point to is, you know, again, you got that eight game season with that ninth week shootout where ones play twos and all that stuff. If you hit, if you have one run like that, where you lose, if a Justin Fields, for instance, test positive for COVID, I'm just throwing a hypothetical out. Yeah. It hasn't happened, but if that happens, he's got true freshmen behind him. And suddenly that team goes from being, you know, one of the top four to being irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot, there's a lot going on there, a lot of moving parts. 
uh, to this thing that too, but it was good to see everybody, you know, almost everybody back playing this past weekend. He has some exciting ball games. Just like you said, the Indiana win over Penn state and in, uh, in overtime was uh, James Franklin doing what James Franklin does. You know, he kind of finds ways to mismanage the end of ball games and it cost him. Michigan seems to have found a quarterback that can yeah. actually run their offense and Joe Milton yeah, and they, you know, they could be a wild card too. You know, I never can take them seriously because every year they well, end up winning an egg. But, um, you know, if if they have a quarterback, but again, like you said, there's no margin for error with COVID, and um, one one little thing could change everything in that league. Then the the killer, as far as the SEC was concerned, Alabama just crushed uh, Tennessee. And yet they lost maybe the most dynamic player in the in the nation, in Waddle, the wide mm -hmm. receiver, uh, broken an ankle on the first play, the kickoff return, uh, and he's done. And he may be the most electrifying receiver in the game right now. And so Jalen Waddle's out, and I, I don't know. It didn't seem to affect Alabama at all against Tennessee. Now going forward, they still got games. They've got to play LSU. They may be the only team that might be able to give them some problems. And that's just based on the LSU playing a pretty good game against South Carolina the other night against a good defense. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I mean, that, that's a killer. Uh, Baylor and Texas. Um, Texas finally comes out and plays a strong football game. They look like, hey, they're back. I'm not going there. But, but let's look at the other side of that. Baylor, uh, you want to talk about a team that's been ravaged by the COVID situation. Uh, they had four practices in a 21-day period at one point. They had to shut down their entire program for a couple of weeks. because So basically, they've only played three ball games. And, and you know, really, I, I thought they looked pretty sharp first half. But, uh, boy, people in the Waco are down on Charlie Brewer now. He can't throw the ball beyond 15 yards. They got a report uh, last night that two of their running backs, their two starting running backs, both seniors, were going to opt out. Today, Dave Aranda says, no, no, they're staying. They're not, they're not opting out. I don't know what's going on in Baylor right now. Yeah. Um, I think it's just tough. It's, it's you know, they had, they had a really good coach, and they had built a, a, rebuilt that culture. Um, and then now because of COVID – and. I don't know that there's been another power five school that's been an effect, affected by COVID as much as them with all the cancellations um, and everything. But I, this is, I think this is going to be probably a tough year for them. Um, I still think that they can get back. I, you know, I think they have a good guy to replace Matt Rule, but um, I just don't think this is going to be the year. You can't, you can't have where every week you don't even know what you're going to have available and you're worried if you're even going to have a game. Um, they, I mean, they haven't really even been able to have a routine. So uh, the big thing that I took from the Big 12 this weekend was um, Oklahoma State. They beat Iowa State, but they're winning with defense. And we don't, we don't usually say that in the Big 12, someone winning with defense. Um, so we'll see uh, as we get further in if they can keep it going. But I, I have been saying all along, I think the Big 12's one shot at the playoff was if Oklahoma State run the table. Now, I still don't think they, they can. I just think that's because they're playing a full nine games against the league, but they're playing good defense, um, and we'll see if they can keep that up. But uh, that was a surprise to me that they, you know, did the way what they did to Iowa State. Yeah, I, I was surprised by that. The thing about Oklahoma State is Oklahoma State never plays what you'd call great defense in terms of – keeping people I mean their idea of great defense they'll give up 400 yards a game but, Bend, but don't break yeah. they, they they get turnovers they get yeah. tons of turnovers and so that's been real good I mean they look like a good solid football team now we'll see like you said you know the, the other thing about Oklahoma State though is that they always find one one game to slip up on when they every year business. every year they blow it for themselves and so we'll see what happens there but uh, you know Tom Herman saved his job for another another week um, uh, and there, there wasn't a big stink. All the players stayed out on the field for the eyes of Texas. And so it seems like uh, they somehow have gotten that thing kind of calmed down for this week. We'll see going forward. Have you watched one inning of the World Series? I have. Uh, I, haven't been watch I haven't been watching all the game. The games take so long. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, – 
the Dodgers back in control. Uh, Kershaw did his thing last – game four was insane. Mm-hmm. The end of game four was just was just nuts. Uh, I thought maybe, maybe Tampa Bay was going to find a way to steal this thing. But, you know, now they, they got to win two in a row to, uh, to close it out. It's actually been um, a really entertaining series. And the sad thing is I think most people haven't seen any of it. Um, again, I think baseball's done a terrible job marketing um, and promoting it. Um, but uh, it's it's been it's been entertaining, and it looks like though the Dodgers got need one more win to get it done. Well, I'm happy for Clayton Kershaw uh, because he's taken a lot of abuse about you know what the, the problems and not being able to get things done and and, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, but I'd love to see him for his sake. I'm not a Dodger fan, but I would love for his sake to see them get it together. Uh, before we wrap this thing up, a uh, couple of couple of stats I got to throw out at you going back to the Cowboy game, just so we can end on a high okay. note. Just so we can end uh, with that. The Cowboys so far this year have allowed 84 points off of turnovers. We are five games into the season. Two and five, so seven games, sorry. Isn't that right? I mean, so they're five. averaging – Over 10 points a game giving up off turnovers. All right. 84 points off turnovers so far this season. The Pittsburgh Steelers have allowed 94 points for the entire season. (laughs) All right. I'm not done yet. They still have to play each other, by the way. The Cowboys have to play the Steelers. Yeah, I'm, I'm exci- I am excited about seeing what Joe Burrow does because they have to play the Bengals, too. And, and Joe Burrow had a great game against Cleveland. Oh, yeah. The problem for him is he has no defense. Oh, my gosh. They gave up 20 points in the fourth quarter and, and made Baker Mayfield look like he was Bernie Kosar. You know, it was, it was unbelievable. Uh, the other stat, through five and three-quarters games, so apparently this was out, you know, this was posted yesterday before the game was over. Cowboys have 14 turnovers, six failed fourth down conversions, two missed field goals. They have essentially turned the ball over on 22 of their 68 drives this season. That that sounds like a team that's going to win the NFC East, doesn't it? So think about that. You're turning the ball over almost one in every three possessions. You're turning the ball over. Yeah. It's what? dumpster fire. It is an ap- absolute hot garbage, and the only thing that makes it the only thing that makes it funny is that down south there's there's also an equally big dumpster fire going on down in Houston. <laughs> no, I had texted a friend yesterday that <laughs> the state of pro football in Texas is is a is a dumpster fire. Um, I mean, both teams are just brutal, and you know. With the trade deadline coming up, we didn't talk about this, but um, there's rumors, especially down in Houston, J.J. Watts unhappy. Um, are there going to be guys that could get dealt before the deadline? I think the difference with the Cowboys is Jerry's going to still think that they're okay and they can do this because they can still – because that like you – if they would beat the Eagles, they're back in first place. But the Texans, they're done. Their season's over. So there could be some uh, trades before Wait. the deadline. And you mentioned trade deadline. Find me one guy on the Cowboys roster right now who has any trade value other than the wide receivers. Yeah, the only guy that I think maybe would, and but I don't know what you would get back from him would maybe be Gallup um, because you've got CeeDee Lamb and you've got Cooper and they need to get some other things. Uh, so maybe Gallup, but you just used a second round pick on him two years ago. Uh, but I don't know maybe a team that's desperate for receiver help, but everyone else, they have these monster contracts that they're not earning and no one's going to want those. And, and, and then again, as I, I say, we're going to wrap it up on this high note, keep in mind the the contract extensions for Zach and for Jalen Smith don't even kick in until next year. So uh-huh. those, those new extended contracts won't even start. And we are already seeing – I'm not sure – I'm not sure Zeke has anything left in the tank. I mean, he looks terrible. And one of the things somebody made a point now, he's had COVID-19. Is that having an impact on his game right now? Uh, because I've talked to a number of people. I know some people who've had it and got hit hard by it, and it's taken a long time for them to recover from it. So, but he looks like a guy that's lifeless out there right now. 
Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like the same guy. And Jalen Smith just looks lost. He gets worse every year. You know, I mean, to have the, the, the athletic ability, but he had the drop foot. And then you get into the character issues. You know, when you're talking about lack of leadership, uh, you know, I just I, – I don't know. It looks like this whole roster needs to be churned. It, Jimmy Johnson needs to be coming in here throwing people out onto the COVID field, you know, like he did the asthma field. Um, the, it, something drastic's got to happen because this roster, as it's put together right now, uh, they've, they've got shredded offensive line. I don't know anybody playing any defense. The only one that seems to even be trying back there is Diggs, and Diggs even then was talking smack and got burned yesterday. Got burned by McLaren. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, it's just – it's it's a train wreck, and we still got several months to go. So, <laughs> hey, other than that, have a great day. You know? Yeah, let's wrap up on that. <laughs> All right, uh, Ryan, uh, last words, anything before we go? No, I just – just when I thought – the Cowboys season wouldn't get any uglier. I'm afraid it's going to get worse. So. Uh, tr trust me, it can always get worse. Yeah. Ben, De ben DiNucci could get hurt. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, I mean, the backup better be ready. We're je we joke. I mean, hey. as bad as that O line has played, he needs to be ready. I'm telling you what, I'd be searching the waiver wires everywhere for bodies. Right. They now. need to. They need to call Miami and try to trade for Fitzpatrick. I, yeah, I, that'd be great, except I don't think Fitzpatrick would want any part of that offensive That line. offensive line. Not happening. You'd rather All sit right. on the bench. Exactly. Hey, be sure and listen. Uh, watch, share, leave comments on YouTube. Uh, we try to drop every Tuesday. And uh, we'll be back next week to rip into the Cowboys one more time uh, because that'll be a Sunday night game. And so it, we'll be doing this on lack of sleep because we'll have had to sit up late to watch that crap. And so it'll just put us in an even better mood than we're in right now. So there you go. You All good? right, man. Have a good week. All right, buddy. Ryan Peterson, Brian Houston, Brian and Ryan. Thanks very much for watching. We'll talk to you next week.